So, uh, so I very soon, very minutes ago, minutes now. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I hope everybody is doing well today. Um, we are here to talk about high school. High school. Do we need it? Do our kids need it? What does it have to do with learning? How do we understand it? What purpose does it serve? Got a lot of questions. If you have a question about high schooling, homeschooling your children, and doing those teen years, what do you do with them? Anyway, that's what we're going to be talking about. So stay with us, and we'll talk to you in just a few minutes. Hello! I wonder what happened there. What just happened there? Just switched to a very interesting thing. That's not it either. Where did I go? Okay, here we are. All right. Hello. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. Whatever time you zone you're joining me from. Um, we are talking today about high school. What happens during those teen years when you are having kids that you think different things that we've been told. So I don't call the current school system traditional because it's not. And it's what we're doing as homeschoolers are is the real traditional method of learning. Learning is um happens every day life breathing is learning and so when we get when our kids get to a certain age 12 or so um then they generally with their brain development that requires things change in in their brains and they want things that are more structured, different than what they've been doing. So if you've been homeschooling all the way through their their early years, it may look very different when they turn 12 or so. Um, and as they get to that 14 age, you might already have 
entrepreneurs in your hands and people who are learning from real life. For instance, a lot of homeschoolers have jobs. So they're learning from their everyday job life. So for instance, math skills, interpersonal skills, all those things that they learn from being employed. I know 14 year olds that have worked in different uh, companies and they learn the skills on the go. And it's not a, a situation of uh, school to work where they are being used or manipulated um, by an employer. This is the real world skills that they're being able to use and learn from being employed. Family businesses are so great because that, especially if the students, if your kids love it and they want to be more involved with your, your business, your home-based or, you know, uh, family business. So one resource I'm really going to suggest that people read if they are, um, if their kids are approaching that teenage time and we've been so conditioned to the grade levels. I've talked about this a lot, that grade levels are not, you know, once your your children are out of the system, grade levels no longer have to apply to you. If you want to use grade levels, you can, but think really carefully about who created those grade levels and why. What purpose did they serve the people who created them? And what purpose do they serve your children? So, um, this book that is so amazingly fabulous and that I would re um, just invite everybody to find on Amazon. You can find it. Um, it's called Skip College. Now, the reason why I know we're not talking specifically about college and university in this program, but in high school, that's what everybody thinks they have to do. They, when they get to that 14-year-old age, we think we've been conditioned to tell our kids that they have to be, um, they have to have a certain number of credits. And um, if they want to be successful. So we've been told for generations, like at least four to five generations, that we uh, can't be successful if we don't have high school credits, a high school diploma. Um, the Now we have the 40 hours of compulsory volunteerism. Um, that came in when uh, in the first few years of my homeschooling. And it was a very interesting turn of events that brought that to Canada, which I can talk about on another uh, live. So first of all, we have been indoctrinated and that isn't doesn't mean that once we um, go to potentially a, a post-secondary school uh, college or, or university that that stops because it's not necessarily true you go to a university it's still somebody else's curriculum that they are teaching you that you should have the option to put your own voice into so in high school or in that um, that older teen uh, age range, what is it most important for them to be learning? Well, the answer to that is very unique. It depends on the person. The person who is the learner, that's who it depends on. There have been uh, young people starting their own businesses. I know I'm going to be interviewing uh, a 12 year old, almost 13 year old, I guess she's 12 years old when she started her business. And she is the CEO of an amazing digital school. So um, there are kids, there are teens who are already living their best life uh, or at least beginning their best life. And hopefully that will continue. The, um, the important thing is to remember that you don't, they don't have to wait until they're 18 to have a career or have a business or learn in, 
in a way that is critical thinking um, that gives them their love of life. So when they find those things that are of interest to them, why should they wait? Uh, if there's no real reason, let them learn the things that they're capable of learning. It's okay to let or put to the side the things that are not relevant to them at this particular point in their lives. When they need to learn it, when it's relevant, that's when they will pick it up. And they will pick it up faster than you ever thought possible because I mean, I think all of us know when you are really interested in something, you learn it faster, you retain it longer, and you're able to put it into place and and uh, activate it and make it, it makes sense in the real world because they've never left the real world. Um, when a, a student goes to high school, let it be that they are going because they have a love of learning, that they have a passion for the subject matter, not just because it's what you're supposed to do next. Because you could be with someone, with a, a child who is capable of so many more things than you can even consider. Um, I never thought, when I look at a teenager, I don't look at a high schooler. I look at a human being who has interests. And when they start doing something they love, like, oh, playing games, playing video games, um, they are doing so many complex procedures, mathematically, uh, visually, um, critical thinking, all those things are happening. But unless you spend the time with your child, you may not see the value in what they're doing. So I think the biggest thing is not to be afraid that your kids aren't going to get what they need. Because in this day and age, we don't need the same things that we needed 200 years ago. We need critical thinkers. We need kids who are creative. We need kids who are able to think outside the box, bring up new ideas, and be supported going forward with them. So our traditional, no, not traditional, traditional is good. The conventional education system that we have, uh, whereby credits, subjects, and somebody else determining whether you have learned uh, and memorized what they want you to learn. Not necessarily what you think is right, and not necessarily what is right, but what the curriculum tells you you have to learn. Is It's more important that you really, we really have those people around us in this day and age. So I want to bring up something mathematically that I've noticed. On TikTok, you can see kids from different countries doing the exact same math problems different ways. Why do we limit our children learning math one way? Why don't we show them these all these different ways and let them pick which one might be best for them? Or does it even matter? How is it relevant in their lives? When I coach and I'm sitting next to a kid or over Zoom, watching them do something that they are passionate about, that they really love, you can see all the different things that are going on in their mind that make it statistical analysis, especially in games where they have to level up, right? Um, there, there are just an immense amount of stuff going on in those games that by that child that are way more advanced than we would expect a child of that age to be doing. But unless we spend the time with them and be interactive with them and communicative and having that relationship with them, it it's not going to make sense to us because it's not our world, right? It's their world. It's the new um, what's going on every day. 
So we don't want to uh, just to have a return to the indoctrination factories. Choice, agency, those things are really important for learning. When you don't have the choice, when you don't have the, the desire to learn it, how does that make you different from an indentured servant? You know, um, there's no real cognitive value to that if it's going to be something that they resent or that they hate or makes them stop loving learning. So the um, one of the wonderful articles or chapters in this book uh, of Skip School, uh, Skip College, sorry, um, it is by uh, Carrie McDonald, who's amazing. And she her chapter is Toss the Textbook and Learn Through Living. You learn the most through living. A lot of people will tell you that when you got a job, did the things you learned at school help you with that job? I'd love to hear from you. Please don't hesitate to comment. If you feel differently about this, I would love to hear your comments and your insight. Um, and so did those things that you learn in high school or elementary school help you in the, the world today that you're living in? Um, John Taylor Gatto's chapter on how we got here, how conveyor belt of modern schooling, how we got that conveyor belt of modern schooling. Um, and, you know, a lot of kids just want to get off. And they want to learn their things that are relevant and of value to them. Um, another um, chapter in this book, Skip College, which you can find on Amazon, is Ditch the Diploma, Build a Portfolio Employers Care About. Now, I'm going to give you a... a, a a story of a young lady who wanted to work in finance, but she was living, learning, and never went to school, and her parents were what we call unschooling, and so she decided that she wanted to find out how she was going to get hired by this big financial company. So she went to the, uh, she found out who the HR person was, the human resources person, and she booked an appointment with the uh, human resources person to ask about a project she was doing for school about hiring practices in the industry. So she went in, she had this wonderful meeting with the HR person and she asked her, you know, a whole bunch of questions that she would expect to have asked. And then she asked, well, what if you had a homeschooling student who had all the ability uh, of what you're looking for, but hadn't gone to school, would you think about hiring that person? And the way she worded everything and the way she communicated with this uh, HR person, the uh, human resource a a person said, yeah, absolutely. We are always looking for people who really want to get into this and aren't just book smart, aren't just mark smart. You know, they didn't just get, you know, A's and everything, um, and they really don't know how to use it in real life. So she found out through this interview that that was a possibility. And so she pulled out her resume and gave her her resume, and she did end up getting hired. And that is one way, that communication, that um, relationship with the person that you're looking or the place that you're getting, uh, wanting to get into. Um, and that can mean a lot of different things for your, um, in, in your everyday life, because it could be anybody that you're, any company that you're looking to work for or creating your own company. You can go in and interview the owners and, creators of the companies and ask them as, as a young person, men, can I get a mentorship? Can I come? Can I job shadow? Can I uh, learn more about what you do, how you do it so that I can be a benefit to you um, or start your own business? So having that 
portfolio and that in. And one of the things I tell uh, the students that I work with is if you're interested in working at a specific place, find out who works there. Go on LinkedIn. Look up the people who work there. The, a lot of them will have their CVs, their resumes uh, on their web, on the websites or on uh, LinkedIn. And so that's a really, really good thing to do. Do your research. Uh, and you don't need high school for that. Um, so let's see, what's the next one? The economic secrets of going to college. So I have a friend in the United States who is an expert on scholarships. And we're not just talking, wait until you've, you know, finished high school and want to, um, go to college and then you apply. She helps kids from as young as a year and a half get scholarships that they can put towards their tuition fees. And remember that even, I know the book is called Skip College, but if you want a certain skill and there's only one place to get it, for instance, um, there is one university that teaches shoe engineering. And this is the only university that Nike hires their engineers from. So sometimes there are things that you need to get a specific person to have that skill. And so connecting with them and being able to go to those places is what you want. And that's okay, but it's okay, okay because it's your choice. It's your agency. It's what you are passionate about and what you're interested in. So do you really need high school to do that? Well, I can, if you look up um, teenagers and entrepreneurship, you will find a ton of resources and a ton of kids that have successfully created their own businesses. I know a 17 year old who had hired 50 people for her business and she never needed a high school diploma to do that, but she employed 50 other people. So think about the options. You don't have to limit yourself or your student, your child to a regimented um, set curriculum of things that they may not ever need and may not be relevant for their life. So just be really, really conscious of what choices they are making and making sure that they have the the agency to make the choices that work for them best. Um, the next chapter in this, this book is more than just a job, how to build your brand. Uh, and then 10 bad comment, common arguments for college. So this is where you find out, you know, you, do I need to have this degree for this job? Um, because I know people who are in college and university right now who, if they had known they didn't have to jump through all those hoops in, in high school, they would be in totally different careers and they, they know that they'd be happier. Um, so if you know a teenager who is in high school and wants to drop out or is struggling, please um, give them my information. I'd be happy to help them or send them to this book, Skip College, and give them a head start on living in the real world instead of being in a situation where they're being told what to do, when to do, how to do it. So this is very controversial. I'm sure there's a lot of people, especially people in the industry, whose livelihoods depend on bums in seats in the high schools that will look at this as being um, <sighs> dangerous or um, I think that last chapter of uh, that book um, 
of skip college says it you know 10 bad common arguments for college i'd say you know there are at least as many uh arguments against high school um because it is a huge time waster for a lot of students uh so i would love to hear from you please leave your comments in uh on wherever whatever platform you're watching this on linkedin twitter uh, Facebook, um, or, and it's on Facebook in several different places. So I hope you will enjoy this information and think about it. And especially if you're thinking, you know, I'm, I'm worried about, you know, my child not wanting or not being successful in high school then look at some options. And, and let them be uh, the, the director of their own course. And you can support them in what they're choosing by appreciating their perspective, their point of view, and what they want for their lives. We can do this together and our we will see the success in our uh, kids that are you know, high school age. Um, so if you have any questions, again, drop them in the comments and I'd be happy to point you in the direction of where, why I came to the decisions that I have. And uh, my kids have successfully gone on to uh, careers and higher education without ever having gone to high school. So please, Drop that comment in there and I'd be happy to chat with you. Thanks for joining me today. Had a great time. Look forward to it next week. Have a great weekend.